really stands out to you as being the most important, really, of your really high focus in terms of everything happening with energy? Well, I'm going to have to answer that. It, it's really all around electricity, but let's go back because this is the time of year where at least I want to talk about uh, crude oil, natural gas, propane inventories as we're going into winter. And I've been really bothered by gasoline and crude oil inventories. Refineries have been really at an all time high for utilization, probably 95% ish. Yet last week was the first week we had seen any rise in gasoline inventories, crude oils below historic five year norms. So all of those are kind of telling me that consumers particularly need to be thinking about making sure they're prepared for this winter because if they can fill up their tanks, whether it's heating oil or propane, we know they're better off going into the winter. So it, the, the pricing environment has been relatively calm, uh, even though you've had you know the issues with Israel and Russia and just so many geopolitical issues, the prices have been calm and the relationship even today is fairly nice. Uh, WTI is about $64 a barrel, $4 premium to Brent. And it's kind of been that way. And if we look to the future, most people are saying that the floor for crude oil will be about $50. That's if everything works out. We're clearly in a supply driven world right now. Uh, and the highest price I've seen by analysts I follow and believe would be $70. So. I think if you're a consumer in the U.S. and you're thinking about your energy needs, I think the next six months look to be more of the same. I would say to a consumer, it's really important that they begin to prepare for winter. As I said earlier, it probably is about electricity, about reliability, price, and supply. Okay, so you mentioned, of course, natural gas as far as the, the future outlook, but what about nuclear? And as we've seen this really emerge as a result of the, the necessary restructuring of, of right now our energy grid, are you seeing nuclear become more and more part of this conversation? Well, nuclear is totally a part of the conversation. I think the reality of the nuclear power industry is there have been about 19% of the grid for the last 10 years and near-term projections for the next three or four years they're hardly going to still be more than 20 percent. It's just because the time to market is so slow. I've seen a lot of movement. And for you, they're thinking about investable themes. Nuclear is certainly top of mind right now because it is the cleanest 24 hour energy available. But I think sadly for people who are looking for the lights to be on and thinking about how they're going to live and interact with electricity, the nuclear situation is what it is probably for the next 10 years. Okay, so as far as other clean types of energy, obviously solar, wind, part of the conversation hugely, but are we seeing any, obviously, I mean, evolution really regarding the Trump administration's policies, as well as like, you know, us here in the U.S. versus the rest of the world, which I do know tend to prioritize a bit more of these clean energy resources than we do here. Yeah, I think, so I look, I always look to Europe every day to see not only what are the policies they're thinking about and enacting, but how is it driving business? How is it impacting cost or reliability of electric service? And I would say what you see there is certainly at their movement to clean energy negatively impacted manufacturing, negatively impacted electric prices. Um, a lot more uh, detail around that, around some of the Russian natural gas. But to bring it back to America, I think the, the one issue that we all have to be extremely aware of is we probably are entering a period of reduced reliability. Department of Energy recently issued a report and they expected to see interruptions from just grid strain, just the fragility of the grid could increase 100% over the next four years. That didn't even take into account weather related disruption. So we're seeing it everywhere we look, uh, the grid I live in, I live in the mid Atlantic, so that PJM grid, we're seeing really a record concern around pricing, record concern around reliability and to your point, uh, while nuclear power is kind of the darling of the day, it's still not going to be much of an answer for the next seven to 10 years. It's really about natural gas right now. And then, of course, I know all eyes are on some of these wind projects, offshore wind that Trump has really come down hard on. And I think it is causing all of us in the energy space to really be reflective of what will be the right sources of energy for the next 10, 20 years. And what is the balance between reliability, cost, and environmental benefit or detriment that you're looking at?
Yeah, and I think really well said. And I, I know that there's been so much speculation on natural gas and, of course, the reshaping of right now the, the overall grid with the rise of data centers and just the vast need for energy. So like you said, a really supply-driven market. But do you agree with the narrative that we are in any degree of this energy crisis so that there's going to be, I mean, like a massive flux that we could potentially see or are those fears perhaps overblown and things actually are more stable than perhaps the headlines would have you think? Well, I do think we're in a time where unless you use the word crisis, you may not get the attention you need and deserve. Clearly, we're in a crisis for electricity as we think about price and reliability. And to your to your point earlier, if you tick away all the boxes, nuclear is not going to be particularly impactful for the next decade. Hydropower, not particularly impactful for the next decade. It really cold, certainly not going to be impactful for the next decade. We're not going to build a lot of new coal plants in the United States. So natural gas is kind of the standing fuel left uh, with capacity, with the nationwide distribution, with affordability and the ability to build plants. So that's why actually I just did a, a study uh, preparing for some talks I'm giving next week. Natural gas and coal basically have been about 60% of the grid for the last five or six years. The projections for the next couple, they're still gonna be about 60% of the grid. Uh, I would say companies like mine, where we're thinking about propane power generation, not even a real thought five or six years ago, now very much in vogue as we're thinking about what will aid this natural gas powered grid. Um, and we're watching wind, but I think wind, wind and solar just crossed about 14% of last year's uh, grid demand. And I don't think we see a lot of variation in that over the next three or four years. So all of us in the space are kind of resetting, rethinking what will be the right tool. Can we afford it? And what can we get to market? If you, if you look at it that way, it's going to have to be natural gas for the next four, five, seven years while nuclear is catching up and while we're rethinking what are we going to do with particularly onshore wind. I think offshore wind, uh, you'll see it fall off just because of the cost, but onshore wind and onshore solar. Jenny, one, one thing I'm always reminded, the United States is a big country, uh, lots of different variables. You're seeing Texas really enjoy solar and wind, and rightfully so. They have the right, uh, the right profile for solar and wind. They got a lot of available land. It's a very different conversation than we have in Massachusetts, Rhode Island, or Connecticut. Uh, and I think really good perspective and also a really good reminder that a lot of these these you know headline driven type of stories regarding energy are more long term. It's not necessarily going to be something that's imminent like again the headlines would have you you think. But I appreciate that perspective and really really great insights on the entire restructuring of the energy landscape. That's Tucker Perkins of the Propane Education and Research Council.